What's going on everybody? My name is Kyle Welcher. Thank you for watching my videos first and foremost. This week we're fishing James River. Look how close we are to Richmond. It's going to be a fun week. Let's go. Well, we're getting ready to go to a tournament. Anybody got any guesses on where we had to stop before? Y'all know if I had any problems, it's gonna be one type of problem. Mm. That's the bad one. Okay, so in one of the last few videos, I said that I have not been doing what I should have been doing, and my boat has been very unorganized. It got very dirty. Check out all this stuff. That's literally everything out of my boat, out of my spare bedroom. All my stuff, getting organized, getting ready to go to James River. So all this right here, every single bit of it, is going to James River. But not all of it's gonna be in the boat. Let's get it organized. We're completely done organizing everything now. Still go put it in the boat, but look right there. I'm gonna show y'all what I did real quick. So this is kind of the way that I do things. You see, I got a. This is a box full of crawls right here. Pretty much all the crawls I use, I just stick them all in here in order in the style and the colors and all that stuff throw these in the boat obviously i label all this stuff with like tackle tags and there's about high water creations that's what i use i know a good buddy of mine owns the company so i take all my hooks and put them in bags like this so i take the cut out and i rip it like i did right here so you can see what kind of hooks is in there believe it in this pack the bag actually came in hog tech tunks and comes in a bag like that that's what i use now just it's a perfect little size to put um you can put probably six of them things in one of these little compartments so, i mean that's the way to store the most hooks like literally i can store so many hooks because this is four bags of hooks right here four bags of hooks going in this one little place and i, I could probably fit two more bags in here if i wanted to so that's the way i do everything and then uh line in there and then this is extra. This just stays in the boat. I mean the truck. So you can see I've got Ziploc bags of everything. Ziploc bags of frogs and worms. Everything is <clears throat> kind of individual. Keep it in the Ziploc bag so I know where it's all at. This all stays in the truck in case I need something special or mostly it's all duplicates. So that's my stuff. Got some rods ready. Everything's ready to rock and roll. And then this is the stuff. I'm just going to throw this in the boat. It's hard to store these kind of swim bait packs like this. So I leave them in that Ziploc bag and throw it in the boat. More right here. So that's the only two Ziploc bags going in the boat. All right, in the boat now. Just got the new batteries put back in. That I just I got one yesterday. The other two were old. But anyways, I'm going to show you how I set the boat up. Just a little. You know, it's not super extravagant. I think it's pretty standard. But I'm going to take a look. So basically... That's how I set my center console up. Got all these things right there. Labels up. Tupperware containers over there. That's some swim baits I was talking about. That's a bag of reels. Got some uh, leader line in there. And some Sharpies and stuff. That's how I set my rods up. Pretty standard. I don't got that many in there. I don't have that many rods to begin with. That's where I keep my rain suit, life jacket, scale, sunscreen, life jacket, paddle. Crap up there. That could I could put more stuff in, but try to keep it light up there. I know what's in here, probably some trash. Normal stuff. Live wheels. Big live wheels. Got oxygenator. Everything's good. Tools, tool kit, throw cushion, G juice, coil tags, rope. Up there, I keep some extra nuts and stuff to go on the batteries. I have Blue Top Optimas with one of those. That battery right there is way better than these. These Blue Top Optimas are straight junk. This is for the co angler. I will get that stuff out and clean it up a little before my co-anglers put stuff in there. But a little bit of trash, some fuel stabilizer. So that's it. That's how I do it. Uh, try to keep it pretty, pretty organized at least. But uh, you know, after fishing for a couple days, it gets kind of messed up anyways. But that's how it starts. Check that out. Guess where we're headed? We're on the way to Virginia. Look at this thing driving. Got it packed up. That's extra baits, line, extra hats, 
boats back there. Everything is packed up. We're headed to Virginia to fish the James River open. Well, very exciting. We're on the James River. Never been here before. I always love to fish new places. Hunters are there right now getting me a fishing license. About to go in this little, it looks like a dredged out little backwater. It's got a couple barge ties, so I'm sure it's gonna be deeper than the average pocket. So we're gonna go back in here, fish around for a minute, try to find something. I will show y'all something. I've never fished in water this warm. As far as I remember, I've never seen 91. Earlier I saw 92 here, and it's still 11 o'clock. So this water is daggum warm here. I got around them now. We think it's just because the tide's up. Hunter's out. Hunter's out right now. Okay, so obviously I'm not on James River anymore. I didn't make an outro for that day, but the wind noise was absolutely terrible that evening. A storm blew up in it. You could see whenever I first got there in the morning that it was bright, sunny, it was nice. It was super hot though. And then by the evening, whenever I actually started catching the fish, a uh, front had came in. Now, the front came in, but the tide that I was catching the fish on the best was the incoming tide that evening. I wrote it all down. Within two hours of the incoming tide, like as like a light switch came off when it got kind of full and the tide was still coming in I started getting some bites so basically I ran that and I started realizing that was the tide I wanted to fish on so I kind of ran it up river which makes you know you keep that tide longer if you go up so I was down around the drawbridge and whenever I caught that uh, three and a quarter or so I was down around the drawbridge and then I ran up and I fished some more stuff on up and caught some fish that I guess I didn't get on camera I thought I did um, my laptop crashed that's why I haven't been uploaded this yet but I thought I got that on camera maybe I didn't Basically, my plan coming in this tournament was to go up the James River and flip and frog and crank some isolated cover and stuff like that. I went up the James River this day and did not find anything like I wanted to look for. Uh, it really, really kind of put me in the scrambling mode whenever I went up the James and didn't find anything that I liked. So, basically, that's what happened in this day of practice. We didn't catch very many fish at all. Covered a ton of water, and I kind of figured out a few things. But, basically, in this day right here that you just watched... I figured out that the backwaters were not good, at least that's what I found, and that the James River was pretty much barren. 
I ran it on low tide and looked at everything I could see. And on low tide, there was almost no cover in the water, like almost none. I didn't think the fish would, like a big fish is going to live somewhere where they have to travel 100 yards to get, you know, back into deep water whenever the tide falls. So that was my perception after this day. Just trying to give you all a recap of what I thought after that day. So if you all enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button. It's going to be a fun series coming out. Hope you all enjoy it.